Mm. We are coming to the second sessions. Uh, the most important uh, teachings and practice uh, of the Creator of Vehicles, Mahayana. This is very important for all the practitioners, especially practitioners who are telling to attend the step of enlightenment because this practice, these teachings uh, from the second turning of Dharma, uh, from these onwards are directly uh, connected to the enlightenment state, state of enlightenment. So therefore, this is very special and very important for all the practitioners who tend to register the Therefore, uh, fortunate that we get this opportunity to uh, refresh the uh, one of the most important uh, abstract and invisible uh, blessing and the vows that we talk about, which everyone somehow, I guess, receive only the Bodhisattva vows, because whenever you receive empowerment, the Bodhisattva vows, refuge, are included in that, you know, in, in empowerment. So maybe not separately, but however, when that whenever you receive empowerment, these are compulsory before one really practices Vajrayana, Mahamudra, uh, so in the average way or general uh, way, it's compulsory. Therefore, this bodhicitta, this enlightened attitude of mind, whether you remember or not, but as long as you are Vajrayana practitioner, uh, as long as you receive in any empowerments, these are included naturally. Uh, so it's also very import, uh, important and good that we get this opportunity to refresh all these, you know, the uh, importance, uh, the practices. So in order to practice the, the mind that can really use for the inner purpose. So we have a uh, different form of practices among these formats. One of the very important practice that we have here is Lojong Mind Training for Buddhas, then for the Sanic Power <coughs> and then to Adisha, uh, then to the three men's and masters in Tibet, Homo uh, Brahmosu, and after that, the Nantangpa, uh, Sharawa, and then Chachekawa, who compose these, or who compiled these practices, uh, and who you know, transcribed these practices while receiving for uh, the Chanda, his teacher, uh, uh, Sharama, and these seven points of mind training, the 37 slogans of the Bodhisattva practices, our 59 slogans, uh, these two days we have these practices, and now um, we are going a little bit uh, a reference as a Hriti Shamarpa. Hriti Shamarpa, one of the Kamakadu important uh, masters who is in the Kamakadu village, whose commentary <coughs> on this mind training, which we are in reference for this uh, uh, teaching of mind training, Lajong. Now, mind training is yes, mind training. What is mind? If you think, what is mind? Um, in English, we have only one word, mind. But if you come back to the original 
the words that we're using, like it's pattern, where it's translated from. <clears throat> so, mind meaning say, mind meaning ye, mind meaning to, mind meaning river. So there are many, only a one in English, all the these translations that that have to be all one word. <laughs> so today we have so many words or very rich or word for exactly what it refers to, you know, what it expresses can be readily understood with a different word, which of course in English we do not have every single word for this uh what you say the meaning of the mind. So now defini definition of mind definition of said is Sao Shinkripa meaning Sawa yes Sawa meaning Clarity. Mind has a capacity, you know, capacity to the let's say the, the mind is is uh, everything about mind is either clarity together with this clarity or clear maybe easier clear rigor. Seeing, clear seeing. So if you think about mind training, mind is what you need to understand here in this mind context. In, in this mind training, or this other mind training context, there the mind meaning clear seeing. Not the mind meaning as Mahamudra we are talking about, or great perfections, or Tantra, tantric teachings, or in Tantra, you know, uh, in a classification in Tantras, talking about mind is luminosity. Yes, we talk about mind, luminosity. It's that nature of mind, that mind which is, which is capacity and which essence, which true nature, we talk about luminosity in the Tantra uh, classes or tantric, tantric teachings. But here in the Mahayana, uh, in the modern Buddhist of training for the mind or for the mind training or practices, here mind meaning clear see. So this is important to understand. But it's different. You, you, you have to understand the distinction between Tantra mind and Sutrayana mind. So. <clears throat> Then, uh, now, since once uh, you understand mind is clear seeing, mind has this density, here mind definition is clear seeing. Now, what is clear seeing? Yes, now you have to come to the uh, first thing. Clear seeing meaning the one part of the mind from the eyes that you see object is that you see object uh, and then when you see object for example the eyes consciousness is these eye consciousness only can see the object only can experience and only the experience what you see. So when you experience the object that you see from eye consciousness, but there isn't any capacity, eye consciousness or mind related with the eyes that can differentiate, that can distinguish whether this is big 
is small, whether this is good or bad, whether this is either you like or not. So all these discriminations, I related mind or consciousness has no capacity. Only after you see from the I related mind or the consciousness, then mental you know, the, the mental consciousness, yes, the uh, mental consciousness, the mind, the mental mind or consciousness, that has capacity, that will discriminate. Okay, I see, uh, I see, because I, I see someone, whether someone is tall, short, big size, small size, all of these mental, you know, mental consciousness will root and discriminate. So these, the sixth sense, mental, the mental consciousness. Similarly, there are another uh, 51 mental events according to Abhidharma Kosh. Uh, uh, so these mental events, they also have capacity to also make a comment, uh, commentary on whatever you, you know, see, whatever you hear, whatever you, you know, uh, smell, whatever you uh, sense with the, the you know, uh, body uh, tackles and uh, the taste and so on. So these, um, how do you say, the mental events, also, they also function uh, more about uh, commentary, you know, commenting on whatever you see. The, the man, sort of the consciousness uh, from either the, the sense, the five senses kind of uh, consciousness, uh, whatever you see, or this five senses, whatever. And then this matter even will the intellectual way of this uh, you know, commentary and lots of editing comments and and then uh, changing the and whatever you see the fact right left good bad etc. So this also functions mainly the mental like events you know uh, the uh, the capacity of mental like events are the one. You know, they have more capacity to make this commentary on this uh, subject, object, whatever you have. So, now the important point here is when the mental, uh, the sixth consciousness or the mental uh, sixth sense, um, uh, mental sense, when these uh, Put or bring any actions, any activities, any uh, work on these, whatever the, 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 the object that we see, that we hear, whatever the mind goes, you know, to. So, the interesting part here is um, this mental consciousness only can use one time at one thing not like many things together. Therefore, uh, for example, now, it's like this. From eye, yes, from eyes, that one part of the mental, uh, the, uh, sorry, the consciousness, the mind is active. Same time from ear, one part of the consciousness, the, man, uh, the mind is active. Same time from nose, you know, one consciousness and mental active mind, and then that from the mouth of the tongue, the test. Similarly, all these five sensory levels, if they are very active in one time or same time, then man, the number six or the mental level of consciousness gets very much busy, 
That is the moment you call, I'm super busy. That is the moment. I'm super busy. Me, actually that moment, your mind, your mind, the, the mental consciousness gets super busy, cannot really, it's like, it's like, you know, what to take, what to take, what to take. No, there's, there's no any one specific, you know, that can focus. Cannot focus because too many of information, too many. Example like, if we, yes, if we get duty, responsibilities for many, cleaning toilet, cooking, arranging the room, and, and what else? Uh, uh, driving, shopping, everything we have to do, that means what? You get busy. Same thing, mental also, in the mind also, when we say we are busy, meaning that moment, all the sensory level consciousness mind are very active and they are not any more compassionate with the main, main mind. They are, you know, not really <laughs> taking care. They don't, you know, see very much how to say um, harmony to us, the mind, the sixth mind, the mental uh, mind, your consciousness. So, therefore, what we do usually is something happens like that. Uh, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. We say, when you calm down, what you can do, then probably you can put whatever you want to say. You can bring your issue points clearly. When you are not calm down, you wanted to say, you wanted to do not very clear, not very, very, very effective way, so on. So calm down is perfect watch for that. Similarly, now here, we have seven points in this version, mind training, seven points. The first point that we have gone through yesterday, uh, which is the point number one is preliminaries, the preparations. Yes, preparation for the mind can be trained to well. Mind can be used well. Uh, so for that, certain preparation is necessary. Uh, sometimes in our practice, we call this is already shine, this is already shamata. The first part of the preparation is already shine, already shamata. We, in, in, and when we practice this in a technical way, yes, that moment, shamata started already that moment, that time. So yes, that was the first point, yes. After the first point, the second point here is um, now, uh, yeah, second point also now divided into, class by into two different passes. Number, pass number one, yes, is a, again, uh, preparatory part or preparatory pass to engage into the uh, ultimate of the Jita. Yes. So, the pace number, there are pair two paces. The pace number one is the preparations to uh, minimize or to, to get into this, uh, the practice of the uh, ultimate bodhicitta. So, there the preparatory parts consist with uh, taking refuge, generating the natural attitude of mind, together with these uh, seven links of practices. Um, so, which we have gone through yesterday is whether you have support or shine, bomba, any figures that is ready, uh, uh, that is there and probably with you, or just you can meditate, you can visualize without having you know, the, the real in front of real. Uh, sort of solved with you. So, whatever, either way, one could do all the preparation has in order to get into ultimate political practice. So, um, then after this preparation of language, Bodhicitta, seven things or seven practical practices, then you get into uh, our mind that can be 
used, they can be practiced, they can be trained. So for that preparation, we have 21 times inhaling, exhaling, yes, meditation, meditation on breath. Inhaling, exhalation, yes, inhaling, exhaling one, inhaling, exhaling one, two, like that way, 21 times, which is highly recommended, which, which is highly recommended, yes, by uh, all the uh, uh, meditation practitioners, or especially, of course, from Buddha to all the level of practitioners. So, therefore, these 21 times of breathing meditations, is highly recommended before one get, uh, before one engage into the actual practice, which can you know, now now we are link up. Before I talk about before I talk about the actually there are F consciousness, there are F consciousness. Now I remember this is early, this may come later, but not. But the important here what I wanted to you know, point out and link up here is we see the mental consciousness or mind can be function better with one at a time. Yes, one thing at one time. Therefore, when you want to meditate, when you want to use your mind for specific training, it is recommended to do 21 times breathing in an hour which can help you to minimize all the mental, you know, the, you know, like, uh, sometimes it's called man, mind like an elephant, elephant, uh, elephant mind, sometimes it's monkey mind, sometimes it's the mouse mind, whatever that animal that you can relate to. Animal here is specially, specifically used by the Shanti Deva the Bodhisattva Chalayavatara, sometimes our mind, when it's related with the afflicted emotions, yes, then it's like a crazy animal, elephant. Elephant meaning is, elephant is basically very, you know, huge and powerful, not like a small ends. Small ends, it gets angry, cannot damage much. But if elephants gets angry, they can damage a lot. Similarly, sometimes our mind is just kind of like that way. Sometimes you know, like, so this mental way of getting like how to say active, full, active and busy can be how to say drawn inside inwardly with the twenty-one times breathing can help us to you know reduce, minimize all the mental you know thoughts and the intellectual sort of like the project project projected sort of thoughts, you know. Then we can be able to concentrate, concentrate, use on specific uh, subject that whatever you want to use. Yes, there, therefore, nowadays all these, even the like big company like Apple, Facebook, Google, they also do these meditations before. They start the job, their duty before they start their day. Those employee comes to office after they reach, then short meditation on breathing or something. Breathing is a most common and practice. So somehow short, so that their mind is not disturbed or you know, not active or different things. More you know can be. Use can be practiced, can be more concentrated on specific whatever the job they have, the duties they have. So that is very important, clear reasons. Same thing for us as a mind training practitioner, as meditator. It's highly recommended to calm down, calm down by these 21 times breathing in and out. Yes, that is the main reason. So with this, now the second points out of seven points, uh, the actual uh, uh, has a very 
practice of men. The pieces, uh, there are two pieces, uh, the preparatory and the actual, so the actual pieces here, which is uh, in the sites of now um, the uh, one of the important line training, uh, which according to uh, the seven point lines, in, you can have reference here, consider all phenomena as dreams. I, that says consider all phenomena as dreams. Because we all have, you know, uh, experiences on dream. What is dream? When you, uh, when you, uh, when you uh, interpret uh, the meaning of dream, uh, is something that there is nothing in a real, but in these uh, dream state of mind, um, that that project whatever the you know the the projections the, the matter of appearance only functions until that you are not awakened from that that dream state of mind. So this understanding or these experiences that. Almost everyone has dreams. Maybe hard or you know, difficult that no one has dreamed you know, so far in time. So, based on these experience, we can relate the another level of dream which we never experience, you know, uh, without the help of Buddha's teachings. So, so now another sort of like. Uh, dream that we are talking here is these worldly life, mundane life, the life that we are in is samsara. Indeed, in fact, this also no different than dream state of mind that we experience joy, happiness, sufferings, fears, problems. And so on, same way that these, in fact, if you get away from these mental projections of the confused state of mind, which is the main cause that project whatever we are experiencing in this life now. So these two need to now all go together in order to experience, in order to get the result. So that is now one of the main practice. It is, how should I say, repeatedly we, the practitioners of these Belgium would recite this as mantra. You know, recite this as mantra. Throughout morning, since wake up, till we go to bed, at night or and till we sleep. Beside this as a mantra meaning, what can you recite? Everything as dream. Consider everything as dream. Everything is dream. Indeed, that kind of recitations would collect immediately the experience that you had while you were dreaming. And while after that well, when you wake up from the dream state of mind, and then you see, oh, that was not real, that experience we have. My son, when I was seven, eight, I guess, I had every night dream like Lord of the Ring movie, like we all have watched maybe, Lord of the Ring. Every night I get this dream, you know, like some of the group of people, group of, you know, like chasing me on horse and they were chasing me. I'm running, I'm running, running, running. So fear, you know, that they would chase me, they would kill me, like, you know. And then almost they chase me, chasing them, catching me. Why? Almost they catch me. <laughs> I walk away, you know. And then this is not one time, this is not one week, two weeks, this is not one month or two months. It lasted 
years. Interestingly, is some years before a lot of the thing we came, it looks like that's of my dream. <laughs> so, like my dream story, yeah, actually. Like, so, so after I had this problem, uh, the when uh, my respected guru, to who we came with it, yeah, to who we came with it, uh, who is the also. Uh, one of the main teachers to all the our community leaders. Uh, and uh, the weekend in Bushi, yes. So two, two of them, I was brought to there for one of the very, very senior uh, teacher and shared this experience. And then one of them said, recite and practice Guru Bushi. And uh, so, so sometimes like when I sleep at night, suddenly, you know, in the middle of the night, I will shout, yeah. <laughs> All the monks, they will come. And they have to come and they have to recite Guru Rupache and Tara in front of, you know, in you know, my bedroom. So, you know, it, 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 like these kind of experiences, you know, once you wake up, this is scary, this fear, this you know, chasing, like almost killing me, almost, you know, actually it's gone. But well, are you sleeping? No, it's coming like that. So, so when I relate this now, this exactly this dream in experience, when I relate now, so I can, the best of the best, I could relate the dream state and this present moment in that way, similarly to all of you. We may have different kind of dreams, you know. So one dream that you can all the time remember, that would be your help to practice in this dream state of mind, which is now we are experiencing here. So important here is not only we live in the abstract way or the dream state of mind, but important here is apply, use this with your own experiences in your life. Then a practice will come in effective. Practice becomes more effective, more alive for you. Otherwise, it's just like we are practicing, we are dedicating, we are doing this, that, but there's no really, you know, feeling, there's no really result. So it's very important to link up your life experiences with the practice, general practice, general whatever is given here on this book or any teachings. When you link up, when you connect to your personal life, then at that moment you will get result. So this is very important. Yeah. So when you uh, relate the dream experience to this life, when you let this dream experience to this life, then this life also is quite real, quite obvious. It's very difficult for us to reject that this is not real, this is unreal. Very difficult for us. Why? Same thing. When we experience, yes, when we were experiencing dream, uh, uh, dreams still alive, we experience good, bad, nice, not nice. It's also very difficult to say those are unreal while you are sleeping, while you are dreaming. But only when you wake up, only when you you know, away from that stage, then no need explanation because you experience yourself what is the fact, what is the real. Same thing, these life experiences, good, bad, everything. And in fact, with the Buddha's teachings, we can really <clears throat> see different 
dimension, we can see more deeper nature, things, events, how they appear to us, how they appear to us without checking, without analyzing the fact things and even are with using intelligence to analyze you know, to to uh, how do you say uh, carry the uh, introspections over things and events then you get different result as things and events appear to us seems to us so that way, when you get fight fight with somebody in dream, after you wake up, all these fight, all this anger, all out of anger or jealousy, whatever the afflictions. Once you wake up, those anger, those jealousy, everything somehow. When you were fighting in dream, when you were very, well, very well angry in the dream state, and the moment you wake up, you see no essence, no meaning, nothing to fix on, nothing to hold on. Why? Because you truly experienced that was not real, that was just dream. Same thing if we really analyze according to the Buddha's teachings, according to our inter intelligence, using the intelligence, reasoning, the very deep nature of things and events are. We take a very much possibility, like Buddhas and Buddhas of how they can realizations. We can also get realizations of these things and events. Which help us then to reduce, minimize a lot of, lot of unnecessary suffering problems in life. So this is now main point here. If we can apply this, if we rely on the dream state, if we can apply, if we can use, if we can, if we can somehow relate instead of this and rely on this practice of mantra or saying this is not real, this is not real, this is not real. Sooner or later, things, the interesting thing is as our body is very smart to adjust, adapt every kind of heat, cold, every kind of foods, every kind of chemical things that we, the body somehow adjust in a very smart way. Same way, mind can also be trained and build up the habitual tendency. Because so far, our habitual tendency is totally different and contrary to the things and events that their nature are, the deep nature, you know. So that's why with this practice, we can really build another kind of habit to see things and events in life that brings lots of problems and suffering, dramatically reduce, minimize, and if really good or best level could really can get the realization of you know, the activist test. So that is very, very important practice which uh, one of the, the second points out of seven points of mind training, the one out of the second points, the predatory uh, pass, the actual pass, actual pass divided into three main practices. This is the first practice, first practice that meditating and trying to train the mind and trying to look the mind, try to educate the mind that things and even that we experience are, in fact, it's not driven to the So that way we can really get lots of help in our life. Reduce the problem of suffering. That is one of the main goals of human life. Reduce the suffering problems.
So that way. Okay, so to you at uh, quarter to three.